lamps have been born thick and fast. Some on their own. and some needing help from these young shepherds. This ewe only had one lamb of her own, so Dan fostered or gave her an orphaned lamb. So that the ewe will think the orphan is her own lamb, Dan rubs it with the afterbirth and fluid which her own lamb was covered in when it was born. The orphan lamb now smells like the ewe's own lamb and she accepts it as her own. Well, we're here in the lamb shed at Waterford Moment. I've just got to brief, we've got to keep an eye on some sheep just in the corner. If you look over there, there, there is a sheep that's having a baby, it's giving birth now, but there's another one which has already had a lamb and they're, they're going to get all jumbled up and each one's going to try and take the other's lamb. So I'm going to have to just go in and carefully pick up the one lamp that's just been born and move it into a pen just to the other end of the shed so that they don't get mixed up. All go. You want that? individual pens. Now you've seen the lamb being born in a yarn over there and the mothers were sort of getting a little bit confused and mixing up which is which. So we bring them in here and they spend 24 hours a day in a pen like this. This gives the ewe a chance to, to really get the, to know the smell of her lamb. Now sheep have the most amazing sense of smell. Far, far, far better than our, our sense of smell. They can smell things hundreds of yards away, hundreds of meters away, which we can't. So they, they if you look how they use them, they're licking and, and sniffing their lap, they're licking them and sniffing them, and also having some food because they're hungry. But they're just getting to know the exact smell of their own lambs. And they will only accept their own lambs. They will not accept another sheep's lambs to come and suckle them and look after them. We, we term this our mothering up group. Now, as lambs being born, they then spent a day, 24 hours, in the pen, an individual pen. Then we bring them in here, in the group, and they're just in here for a day. Again, just to 
get used to being in a monkey uh, and just to get used to that thing all together. They'll stay in here, say, for another day, and if everything's all right, there's no problem ones, then they'll all go out to grass and uh, they'll be fine. But if, they, if, we, if there's any problem, then we'll have to uh, we'll just keep them back a bit longer. We will follow these lambs as they grow over the summer. Stockbridge Technology Centre have now started this year's school visits. One of the things the schools planted on their first visit were potatoes. You could have a go at doing this in your school or at home. You can even do this in a pot if you don't have a garden. Farmers have also been busy planting potatoes. The soil is worked with tractors and cultivators to break down any large lumps. Then the soil is heaped into special rows or beds ready for planting the potatoes in. These beds will be sieved by a machine called a de-storer. The de-stoner separates all the stones of any large clods of sod. These are put between the rows away from where the potatoes will be planted. This allows the potatoes to grow and be harvested without these stones and clods damaging them as they grow. The potatoes are then planted into these prepared beds. The potatoes are tipped into the planter by a telescopic loader. As well as planting the potatoes, the farmer also puts fertiliser into the soil for the potatoes to use as they grow. The fertiliser is pumped into this front tank on the tractor before being applied to the soil as the potatoes are planted. Potatoes are dropped down these shoots into the soil before being covered over with soil 
can you see them dropping here? Job done. Now just watch them grow. Right, today we're looking at how we can recycle on our allotment and use what's there naturally to use it make a fertiliser to apply on the allotment to make the plants grow better. So what I've got here is the grass cuttings. Uh, this is my compost bin here. So what I'm doing, instead of putting all the grass cuttings in in one big heap, I'm trying to mix them with the manure from the chickens. So there's a layer of uh, grass cuttings that are on them there and then I put some uh, chicken manure out of the chicken runs, it's basically sawdust or so so uh, shavings and uh, chicken poo and I'm going to mix that up and add some more of this grass cuttings to it. That way instead of just having one thick layer of grass cuttings which won't, it, it needs to get some air in as well, it needs, it'll keep it a bit more open with the um, shavings uh, otherwise it will just go horrible and nasty and won't be any use as compost, it won't rot away. So that's why you mix it. So as I start to mix this, not only you can notice, but there's actually steam coming off here and the heat, you can feel the heat, and that means that it's decomposing the bacteria and the mini beasts, the micro beasts even, are starting to work on it and break it down to make compost. And the heat off there is, is very noticeable actually. So I've mixed that layer in. And then I put another layer of um, grass cuttings on the top. And then when we clean the chickens out again, we'll put a layer of that on and mix that in. So we'll keep doing that, keep turning it over, and it should make compost that we can then put back on the allotment to fertilise the plants. And that's really exactly what farmers do when they spread manure on their fields. Right here I've got some uh, grass cuttings and I'm going to use them as what they call a mulch on top of these uh, potatoes that I planted uh, a couple of weeks ago. The potatoes haven't started to come through yet. Uh, I've already put some on here, but what you can do in a traditional mulch is really to stop weeds coming through. But if you mix the mulch and use a green mulch like um, grass cuttings and you mix it in with the top layer of soil and don't put too much on, well then that will slowly break down and fertilise the potatoes as they grow. So that's what I'm going to do on here. So just mix a little bit, spread it about, and then gently mix it in with this top layer of soil without disturbing too deep down so you disturb the potatoes that will be coming through shortly. Particularly between the rows is a good place to mix it. You only want to light covering, not too much, else it won't break down properly serve the purpose. So it's a minimum couple of inches of mulch on, lightly mixed in with the top layer of soil. Probably better if I'd have done this as soon as I'd uh, planted the potatoes. Let's see how it goes. So there we go, job done. Doesn't look very pretty but we've got all the rows bulged now between the rows and up the sides a little bit and the plant hope is that that will uh, be broken down and provide nutrients for the potatoes which are actually a very hungry crop, they need lots of fertiliser. And actually while I was doing that you can just see some of the potatoes are just starting to come through. So I'll have to keep an eye on them and keep an eye on the weather because if there's going to be a frost this week that would potentially uh, kill them leaves. The potatoes will come again but we don't, once they're now they're through we want them to keep growing so what I would do is probably come and put some either some fleece over them or put some soil over and protect them from any light frosts and then they'll quickly grow back through the soil and they won't have a checking growth. <laughs> 